Anytime, anywhere. Smartphone, tune in radio app. We are 1061 Nash Icon, WRKN, Picayune, New Orleans. Good evening and welcome to All Access on 1061 FM Nash Icon at NashFM1061.com, presented by Crescent City Sports, best sports site in Louisiana. All Access is also presented by the Allstate Sugar Bowl, representing the best of amateur athletics. And by Francesca by Katie, serving up St. Louis style food with a New Orleans flair. All Access with Ken Trahan is also brought to you by Lamarck Ford and Lamarck Lincoln in Kenneth. By Mid South Coatings, Bears, Pole Boys in Metairie. By Bergeron Automotive in Metairie. By Lifegate Church in Mandeville in Metairie. By Premier Automotive throughout the New Orleans area. John Curtis Christian School in River Ridge. Life Resources Ministries. And by Acropolis Restaurant on Perret. It's your chance to talk intelligent sports, all sports, all the time. To join in the conversation, call 504-260-1061. Now here's your host, Cumulus New Orleans Sports Director, Ken Trahan of CrescentCitySports.com and the Kenner Star. And a pleasant good evening and welcome to another edition of All Access, the Wednesday night edition here on 1061 FM Nash Icon on the web at Nash FM 1061. Dot com. Tune in app available anywhere in the world for you to listen via iHeart. You can also get us via Alexa. Just say play WRKN or play Nash Icon 106.1 FM. You can email me at Ken at CrescentCitySports.com. And of course, you can call in the number to join in the conversation is 504-260-1061. Happy Thanksgiving one and all. We hope you have a joyous and Safe Thanksgiving Day tomorrow with family. And thank the Lord for what he's provided in the midst of this difficult year that we've had. Again, it's 260-1061. Love to hear from you to talk about the Pelicans a little bit later on in the hour when we have a chance to visit with Christian Clark of the New Orleans Advocate about the Pelicans' moves and where they stand right now. The season's starting sooner than you think. But we get started by talking about the New Orleans Saints, of course, at 8-2, and two, winners of seven straight on the road at Denver at 3.05 on Sunday. Joining us now to talk about the Saints, about playing in Denver, and much more is a good and great friend. He, of course, played for the Saints, but also played in other destinations in the NFL, 10 years combined, excellent analyst, and a good husband and father and Everything else imaginable. It's great to welcome Torrance Small to the show. Torrance, how are you? How we doing, Ken? Doing fine. Good, doing buddy. Fine. It's great. All, the, all the food is done, and and don't have to do nothing but wake up and eat tomorrow. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, that that's all good, my friend. I'm listen. Listen, it's great to visit with you, and there's so much to get into. And and listen, first and foremost, uh, just uh, your general take on what you've seen from the New Orleans Saints thus far this season in 2020? Well, the, the, the one thing that has improved a whole lot, one, we cut down on a lot of penalties. We've been a lot of penalties early. Um, now the defensive line is uh, waking up. I think Alexander being an um, uh, uh, addition to the defense helping out. That's, that's going to help out a lot. The defense is playing much, much better. Getting out to the quarterback, defensive backs are, are crowding these receivers. We're not getting as, as many penalties as we got early in the season. Um, that's one of the big cha- uh, turnarounds. And, and, we, and we got healthy. Offense, we got healthy. Uh, so that, that's that been a good thing. So now I think we have more, uh, more balance, offense, defense, and special teams. And, you know, we're, we're moving the ball on third down. And we're getting off the field on third down, defense-wise. And we're also uh, limiting a lot of those penalties and some turnovers and creating turnovers. You see a guy like Taysom Hill starting at quarterback, playing well in his first game. And you played the game, so you would know better than anybody. Can a player like that, and a lot of people will put him in the same boat as some others that have played the game, can a player like that be successful in the NFL, and and can it last for a long period of time, in your estimation? Yes, I, well, long period of time, I don't know. We all have to be fortunate. This game brings bumps and bruises, you know. It's, it's, it's part of the game. You know, a lot of guys getting hurt without being touched. That's part of the game. But if it's successful, do it. 
and do it for however long you could do it is the way I see it because wins are hard to come by these days. And if you got somebody, highlight their talent. I think that's the one thing that uh, I love about Belichick is he get players and he highlight their talent. And regardless of what somebody else say, you shouldn't do too much of something, um, he lets them play. He lets them be who they are. And I think that, you know, everybody want to put these quarterbacks in the bubble, don't run, don't do this, you might get hurt. Play the game, you know. Play the game and and, and affect the game. And I think Taysen, I, he, he just has a lot of talent. Don't hold him back. Let him be him. You know, for however long we, we, we get to hold him, let him be him. But let him grow into some of the other stuff. You start adding it in, but I don't think you – you, you, you try to change him to make him somebody he's not. Let him be who he is. I think that with a lot of quarterbacks, let him be who they are and just add. Look, look, to it, look at what's happening to um, Lamar Jackson over there with the Ravens. They're trying to change him and a totally different quarterback from last year. Let him run, man. If you want to run, let him run. You know, run until, until you learn how to uh, uh, be more effective with your pass. But run. If the team is winning, they went 14 and 2. And you're going to stop that? Come on. I wouldn't. I'm just saying I wouldn't do it. You know, I know it's a lot of money invested in these quarterbacks. But hey, I bought them in there for it to help me win. And, and, and that's what he's going to do. That's what he's going to do. Torrance Small, our guest, talking about the New Orleans Saints. And, and as far as, you know, the overall performance, I mean, they'll have to play without Drew Brees for at least two more weeks. Last year they played without him. They went 5-0 and with Teddy Bridgewater. It looks to me like, and that doesn't take anything away from Breeze, he's still a heck of a quarterback and one of the best that's ever played, but it looks to me that this is all about the fact that this organization is, has built a really deep roster. And when you have a quarterback room, which last year included Breeze, Teddy Bridgewater, and Taysom Hill, and this year includes Breeze along with Taysom Hill and Jameis Winston, there's not a better quarterback room in the league. I don't know that any team has three quarterbacks capable of playing and playing well like that. No, no, no they don't. And that's 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 credit to uh, Loomison and and Payton uh, putting a good 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 squad together. You know, not just getting starters, but getting depth as well. Because uh, earlier, as I alluded to, that it's a lot of injuries that happen in this league. They're going to happen. And you just the next man you have the next man up have to come prepared and be ready to play, and that's what we are right now. Look, Casey Hill, I, I, I would say this: he has at least two more good games before they catch on to him and find out his tendencies. In the league, they need at least about three games before they can find out your tendencies. Then they can start attacking your weakness. Is what they try to do. So uh, we have at least two more games to win. <laughs> Before they mm-hmm. catch up, uh, before they can at least try to catch up as possible. But his supported cast is just is just too much. And with the defense playing the way they're playing right now, uh, I just I, I think we can ride the ship to Drew come back. Well, clearly, this would appear to be the last year for Breeze, based upon the injuries and the fact that you know he almost quit at the end of last year. I know he has another year left on the deal, but. Most people feel like this will probably be it for him. He has a network television deal sitting out there waiting for him. And and we're just guessing at this point, but that's my guess as well. Do you get the same kind of feeling? Yeah, just just looking at, you know, the injuries. When the injuries start to to, to come, it'll let you know when it's time to give them up. Um, Myself, I know when I start getting the little knick-knack injuries just kept coming. I told my wife, I think it's time for me to hang it up. You know, as the, one, 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 once those those injuries start to come, uh, your body's starting to break down. Um, it seemed like he had problems with his shoulder somewhat this season. Uh, they have enough mustard on the ball like normal. Um, I, I don't think it's a bad time to retire, but right now he's still he's still part of the team, and we're going to enjoy him as long as he's here. Whatever decision he makes, we'll wish him well, but I, I'd rather focus on what he, what, he, what he has left for us this year, hopefully getting us the opportunity to play in the Super Bowl and win it. As a receiver, did you prefer a quarterback that was accurate and threw you open and put the ball in the right spot? Or was it more important for a quarterback to be able to, to get the ball there 
quicker with a bigger arm, or is it a little bit of both? No, you you prefer that quarterback that knows how to throw you open, knows how to protect you, know when to throw that ball alone. Uh, <laughs> no, you you you. you it, it, it's not cool coming across that middle. One of the biggest, I guess, I'm gonna say fears because you know we did it. Uh, well, I guess you could say fear. We just had courage. You know, come across that middle, that ball in the air, and you know that guy is coming. You know, you still got to make that catch. That's that's that that takes a lot of courage to do that. But it's nice to have a quarterback that can put that ball on the back of your shoulder where where the guy hit 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 you in the back more so than hit you in the front. So things like that. Drew Brees, one of the best, if not the best, in the league for his accuracy in the history of the league at throwing the ball accurately. So. Uh, it's always great to have that type of quarterback. I prefer that quarterback over any big arm quarterback. In the history of the New Orleans Saints, there have been only three games where a receiver caught passes for 200 yards or more. Wes Chandler did it in 1979 on September 2nd of that year at 205 yards on six catches in an overtime loss to the Falcons on opening day. Then Michael Thomas did it. On November 4, 2018, in a regular season win over the Rams when he caught 12 balls for 211 yards. The third of those 200-yard receiving games was December 24, 1994. I was at Mile High Stadium covering the Saints and hoping that they'd play a quick game and I could get home to my family late Christmas <laughs> Eve, right? And yeah. my, my, my guest here decided that he was going to make sure the clock kept running by catching the ball that were thrown to him by Jim Everett. Torrance Small had six catches for 200 yards, two touchdowns, including a 75-yarder as the Saints beat the Broncos 30-28 to at mile high. All right, what do you recollect about that game, my friend? I didn't know I was that fast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I, I, I always said I was fast enough. I'd never been ran down, and uh, 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 they weren't able to catch me that game. I remember it was great, great great game we just caught them blitzing a lot caught them blitzing a lot putting me on um the safety a couple times trying to come down and cover me uh quick uh hot route and and just outran everybody and that one uh the other thing that i remember is is being tired i didn't i didn't realize that thin there until you get to running a lot up there you realize yes thin this thin there does take a little longer to catch yourself than than normal i had to get some oxygen when i was up there but Great game. It wasn't that cold. I thought it was uh, Christmas Christmas Eve. It was Christmas Eve that I did. So yeah. I guess I, I gave myself a great present uh, on that one. <laughs> so the Saints are going there this week and playing on Sunday afternoon. Now, I mentioned to you earlier today, that was the last time the Saints won a game in Denver. Now, they don't play the Broncos very much. They've only played them 11 times in the history of the franchise. But it's amazing that 26 years ago is the last time the Saints won a game there. And you were a big reason for it. So when you look at this game, you talked about the oxygen at altitude, over 5,000 feet altitude. What do you have to do? Do you prepare any differently? And what does it really feel like as a player when you're running full speed in that altitude? Everything is, is you, you force prepare for, you can't prepare for unless you're up there working out. In it. Only thing you do, you, you, um, uh, you play the game. You play the game like you normally play it. They do have oxygen tanks on the side that will help you to recover a little bit. I think you need to be ready to recover because the, the thing is up there is trying to recover to get your, your you know, normal. We, we're used to running in burst and 20 seconds, 10, uh, 15 seconds rest in between and get ready to run another play. We normally train for that. But, to you know, to get that oxygen level back in you, to get it back up, you know, you have to take those, take probably take some deep breaths in, you know, like they say, in through the mouth, out through the nose, so you can try to hold as much um, oxygen in as you can. But you do get a little, you do get a little winded um, coming to the sideline. I think if you take take advantage, take advantage of the uh, machines, the oxygen machines that they have on the sideline. That's something I get. I had never took a oxygen machine until that game. That was the only matter of fact. That that was the only time I ever use oxygen machine is uh during that game um it 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 it, it does um you can feel it once you get a big run and your lungs have to really open up mm-hmm. you you 
can feel the difference. Well, when you run, do you feel, is it a burning sensation in your lungs that you feel? It's, it's nothing It's nothing while you're playing. It's after. It's after all the movement. It's not during the movement. After the movement, then when you're trying to recover and get ready, because once you get ready for the play, you're ready to go. Your body's going to take off. It's going to do what it needs to do. But afterwards, when you're trying to recover, the recovery is a little longer than normal if you're not used to being up there. And that that's the thing is, 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 is recovering after a play. Um, NFL guys, we train to, to, you know, like I say, a short burst, top speed, and then it's a recovery. You know, you look at it 20, say 20, 20 seconds, they got a little area, 15 to 20 second recovery you got in there to get yourself recovered and get ready for the next play. So that that can take its toll when you're not getting that recovery time. And now you probably, you know, you, you, your, your, your next burst might not be at max because you, you didn't get to recover like you want to or you're not used to recovering in, in that uh, altitude. Watching this Saints team play this year, do you think this is a team that is equipped to reach the Super Bowl and possibly win a second Super Bowl? Yes. They have all they have all the ingredients. We're 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 solid on offense. You know, we're solid on offense. We have injury right now with Drew, but if we can ride this ride this out, uh um win more than half of the games that we have uh without him. We ride this ship, we'll be in good shape. Defense is playing lights out. We have, I guess in the last couple of weeks, we have to be probably the top defense in the last couple of weeks. If you look at I don't know where we're at overall, but the last couple of weeks, we should we should be one of the top defenses out there. Mm-hmm. And that, that alone will carry you to the Super Bowl. And then special teams, you know. Special teams, we hit, you know, from punting to kicking to returning. We're hitting on all cylinders right now. And with the other thing that we talked about is uh, the way this team is, is constructed together. Is I just looked at Lattimore then playing, we didn't miss a beat. You know, we're we're not missing a beat. Guys, guys are stepping in. Guys are playing. I don't know what they're uh, said over there on the defense, but they definitely have stepped it up, have turned it around, and it 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 reflects on the offense. And well, one 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 of the other things is we got everybody back. Everybody's. Everybody's back, everybody's healthy, and that's a good thing. Other than Drew at this moment, you know, wishing that he was here. But we're going to ride the ship until he come back, and I, I don't see anybody else, you know. Uh, Tampa, I think we just have Tampa number. Tampa can't stop our offense. You know, they can't They can't stop in between the, the five to ten-yard passes. They can't stop. The Rams did it to them the other night, blew them out, because nothing they, nothing they can do. So I think we have Tampa number. Um Green Bay, we played them again. I think we, you know, we 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 we'll, we'll, we'll beat Green Bay. Rams are pretty Rams pretty much matched up like us. I think for us, uh, uh, a team that's in the for us in the NFC uh, uh, in the uh, NFC instead of the mm-hmm. AFC NFC. I think they might they might compete with us in mm, Rams and you say. You and Green Bay up there, mm-hmm. Tampa up there, but uh, I, 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 I'm thinking more of the Rams, a, a team that would probably give us more problems than anything. And for us, uh, Seattle, Seattle doesn't have a defense. Uh, I think they score points, but they haven't played our defense, so I, I, I give us the, the edge on that as well. Yeah, I, I mean, Arizona's better. I don't think they're quite there yet, yeah. but they're pretty good. Uh, Seattle's yeah, yeah, good on I, offense, I, I but they Arizona. Yeah, yeah. Arizona, Arizona, pretty, pretty good, pretty good team. But I, I don't think their offensive line can hold up to our defense. Mm-hmm. Um, little guy run around there, you know, he can run around a little bit. But I just don't think they they'll match up. Um, with our, I think our defense right now, we're 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 playing lights out right now. I just don't think up front they have enough to stop us. You look at the AFC. Pittsburgh's undefeated. Kansas City's only one loss. Is that a two-team race, or do you see the Raiders or Buffalo or or Tennessee or anybody else truly challenging those top two teams? Well, yeah, I give I give Kansas City and still still is just they're they're playing lights out uh, football right now too. But 
I do give a puncher's chance. I like Buffalo, I, and, and I like the Raiders. Um, those two, I, I I like. I think they they have opportunity because they have they both playing pretty good defense, good quarterback play, uh, and, and and they both you know can run and throw the ball. So, uh, like I said, pretty solid defenses as well. So I, I Kansas City is just uh, man, Patrick Mahomes is just playing. He just playing on another level right now, and it's 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 hard to to beat him. And, and their defense is pretty good on passing, from what they say. But either they're not not too sharp on the run, but he makes up for so much whatever they lacking um, on that team. He's just he's that type of player. He just wherever they lacking at, he he fills the gap. Yeah, I agree. I think. Mahomes is the difference maker. It's obvious what a difference Roethlisberger makes. He wasn't there last year. They're a mediocre team. Now he's there, and they're undefeated. They drafted well with Claypool, and Mike Tomlin is a fine coach. And Kansas City, again, Mahomes is great, but they went out and got Clyde Edwards-Alaire from LSU, and it was a great pick. Tyreek Hill is an elite player. Then they went and added Le'Veon Bell. They might have the best tight end in the league in Travis Kelsey. I mean, you look at their offense. They just got weapons all over the place, and they're coming to New yeah. Orleans to play the Saints on December 20th in a matchup that a lot of people think might be a, a prerequisite to the Super Bowl. It, it, it's a good measuring stick. I think it's going to be a great measuring stick for us. You know, um, the one thing that we we'll definitely need the defense to get out to him, you know. Um, found out, you know, against the Blitz, he he, he had some problems of what it was, I think, the Raiders. Raiders gave him some problems with the Blitz. Sort of uh, the first game. I think we, you know, put a little pressure on him, uh, but you have to be right. Everybody has to be right when you play this guy. Man, if you leave a little room, he's gonna he's gonna find it. But uh, I, if anybody have an opportunity, I think we 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 have an opportunity because we have a, a balance a balance attack. And I, one thing I do like about us, the one thing we've been doing offensively. We've been driving. There haven't been a lot of big plays. We don't have a lot of big plays. We, we have some 20-yard. We have some, some gas plays, but we don't have the big, long runs or the big, long passes. We just beat you up. You know, we're a team that just beat you up. We beat you up down the field, and that defense is getting rested, and they come out and they beat you up. And and that's the that's been the formula. And I think it's, it's, a, it's a great – that's what we did to Tampa. We just beat Tampa up. We just went down – Five and ten, you know, little spot yards here, and just beat them up, and then defense come out there and beat them up some more, and that's that's the formula. That's the formula. I think that's what you have to do to Kansas City. We keep we keep um, Mahomes off the field. We just we we beat up their defense and just take them down, take their heart out, take their spirit away from them, and and let the defense come and, and do their job. And that's that's the way. That's the way you do it. We go down, we put points on the board. You have to put points on the board. That's the one thing the Raiders did. The Raiders beat them up. They went down the field and they beat them up. Now they hit them with a lot of big plays because they got big, they got some big play attack. But that hadn't been that hadn't been our our thing. But uh, with Payson in there, I think we'll throw the ball down the field a little bit more. But with Drew, um, he just hadn't been throwing the ball down the field um, as much. Not needed. I, it's just not it's not broken. <laughs> you know. Keep, keep doing it. So we've been all right with the way he, he, he's, he's been effective. So I think we're okay. I think we're in great shape. I think we have a chance to win this thing uh, as well as the Kansas City Chiefs. I think, you know, they're tops in their, on their, in their side. I think we're top on our side. A couple more minutes with Torrance Small. It's really funny because you brought up the, you know, throwing the ball down the field thing. I just – I just get a big kick out of all the people that talk about that because it's about results. It's about playing to your strengths. The strength of this team is Alvin Kamara, Michael Thomas, uh, getting the ball to him in short routes, letting them make plays, and Drew Brees is incredibly accurate. So play to your strength first off. It's about playing to your strength, not making mistakes, and winning. It's not about how far you can throw the ball or throwing the ball downfield. In fact, I'm laughing because – I'm watching what's happening now with Tom Brady, and everybody's criticizing mm-hmm. him for throwing the ball downfield and throwing interceptions, right? So <laughs> you, can't have, you can't have it both ways, right? Exactly. And, yeah, but, but, that, but that's what I'm saying. Play to your strength. What I said about Taysom Hill, let's play to his strength. You know, we, 
you you win bowl games when you play to your team's strength. Whatever that team, however, however is made up with the talent that you have, you maximize it by playing to to guy's strength. Why I want a guy to run way down the field, uh, a, 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 a speed guy, if he, if he runs a, a four four six? You don't want that guy running deep, you know. I'm not playing to his strength. So, you know, I'm going to use him where, where, where his strength is. Our team strength is beating you up. Five to ten yards we between us and and the uh, uh, the Rams are the best at doing it. it we, we, they beat teams up. If you watch the Rams, they throw the ball. They might get the ball down the field every now and then because they like to do a lot of bootlegs, mixed direction and all. But – they like they like short passes, you know. They 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 nickel and dime you and beat you up and and and, and move down the field and that defense gets rest and it comes out and it beats you up. Yep. That's and before the, I let the formula. Yeah. Before before I let you get away here, uh, just um, high school basketball is underway. Brother Martin's three and zero. They're playing in a tournament championship yeah. game right now. I'm sure you missed that. Uh, talk about your son TJ and how he's doing. TJ is doing. TJ is doing great. Uh, we played Air Force. We lost the Air Force. Uh, he finished up with 19, 19 points, five rebounds, two assists. He missed the second half. Uh, most of the second half with, with cramps. <laughs> he started cramping up. Um, mm. I, I told him, you know, they don't have a lot of um, recruits for basketball, so you have to play the whole game. <laughs> so get your fluids in you, man, so you can play the whole game. But he's he's doing what love love the the the, the yeah, well. change yeah the element the living he he loved the 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 structure of it and all he loves it he loves it he he's enjoying it uh, that's the, my only concern is how he's gonna you know fit with all that structure and all but he loves mm-hmm. it he's enjoying himself he's happy with the decision he made he, he talks about it all the time so glad I made this decision. So, uh, and it helps, you know, his mom and myself out because, you know, with all this COVID out and everything, at least we know the government got you. <laughs> we, don't have to, we, we don't have to worry as much with the government, you know. Take, you got that right. They'll, they'll take care of them first, and they should, along with first responders. No question about that. He is torn small. And kudos to, to, to Brother Martin. Football yep. team 6-0. Right, Six yes, sir. You know, whatever they're, 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 they're number one, they're doing great in the basketball team. Way to go, brother Mark. There you go. Hey, listen, number one seed in Division One football, Mark Bonis has done a great job, and it's been a pleasure watching him this year. Torrance Small, thank you so much. We appreciate the time. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. God bless you, and we'll talk again soon. All right, thank you, my friend, and happy Thanksgiving to you and to all the route here. Thank you. You got it, buddy. Thank you. That's Torrance Small.